from Studio D. Welcome to Dove Point Bible Study. We're so glad you joined us. And today we're right back in the book of 1 John chapter 4 and part 4 entitled Love and the Spirit of Son Sonship. <clears throat> and when we left off last time, John taught us to believe not every spirit, but to try the spirits to see whether they are of God. Why? Because there are many false prophets, he said, in the world. And, and he said, here is how you can tell if they are of God or not. And he said, every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that will not confess that Jesus has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, John said. But as the children of God, <clears throat> we know that the only begotten of God did come in the flesh and paid the ultimate price of death on the cross for our sins, and then He was resurrected from the dead and is our faithful high priest, seated currently at the right hand of the Father in heaven where He ever makes intercession for all all of those who are the children of God. We know He came, and we know that's where He's at now. <clears throat> then John tells us in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4, and here we go, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. You have overcome those demonic spirits, lying spirits, and false teachers. And we have overcome them because... Greater is He, that's the Holy Spirit, that's in you than He, that's the Spirit of Antichrist, that's in the world. Verse 5, They are of the world, John said, therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. Okay, Hey, these people okay, who don't know God all right, are street smart. They know how to get around through the ways of the world. All right? And I'm going to tell you this, street smarts is a good thing to have. But, at the same time, you need to be spiritually smart because that is what you desperately need to overcome the world. Street smarts won't get it done, okay? But the spiritually smart, that'll get the job done. Verse 6, we are of God, okay? But how do we know that? We know that because we believe God's Word. And he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay? So, if you've ever witnessed for Christ and it was obvious that the person just didn't get it, okay, you ever been there? It's because they have no biblical frame of reference. All, all they have, okay, all they know is the ways of the world. And that's okay when that happens because, here's the point, you sowed the seed. Maybe they didn't get it, but you sowed it. All right, very important. And now what do you do? And now you pray that another believer will come, on, come along and will water that seed of truth that you planted. And then, what happens? Then the chances are greatly increased that God's truth will spring up in their heart. Why? Because the spirit that is in the sower and the spirit that is in the waterer is greater than the spirit that is in the world. Period. <clears throat> Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. And it's not always about the affectionate type of love, okay? Sometimes, a lot of times, it's about tough love. The kind of love that can offend, but at the same time brings an attitude adjustment when it is needed. So don't ever forget what Paul said in Hebrews 12 and verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth 
and scourge us. Listen to the last two words. Every son. How many sons? He said every son. Listen, I've, been, I've went to the woodshed so many times with God, I lost count. Way a long time ago, you know. <clears throat> I'll take my correction from God. All right? <clears throat> Let me read this again. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son, every son whom he receives. So if you're not going to take uh, correction, all right, then he's not going to receive you. And that's what that's talking about. <clears throat> and it's that tough love of God that corrects <clears throat> and gets you back on course when you need it. And I've had it, so I know it's true. Verse 8, He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And what's love? <clears throat> that love of God is light. Okay? And that light is truth. And truth is the source of all wisdom and knowledge that leads to eternal life. So love is light. Any way you want to strike it. Verse 9, In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. And it was through Jesus that we could see the light of God, see the truth about God. The Apostle James said in James chapter 1 and verse 17 that God is the Father of lights from whom every good gift and every complete perfect gift comes down from. And that He never changes His mind about giving these good gifts as long as as you maintain that fellowship with Him. Verse 10. <clears throat> Herein is love. <clears throat> Not that we love God, listen close, but that He loved us. That's love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation. That's the price paid for our sins. You see, Christ... Walk perfect before God, but we did not. And as a result, we broke God's law, and the penalty for breaking that law is death. And because Christ loved us, He shed His blood, and He died on the cross on our behalf. And when we accept His sacrifice that He made for us, God forgive, <clears throat> forgives us, and by the love of God, and the blood of Christ, we receive redemption from sin and we gain eternal life. But it's because He loved us first. Verse 11, Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Why? Because we're all a family. The family of God. Okay? Verse 12, No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And His love is perfected in us. Listen close. His love perfects you. His love perfects me. In other words, His love completes you and makes you the kind of person that God is pleased with. And it don't happen overnight. It's a process. Because it completes within you that joy, that peace, that long-suffering you have for people, that gentleness, that patience, the kindness that is developed for other folks, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Those are the things that please God. And that's what love will perfect in you. You don't get it overnight. So it is God's presence and love within us that gives us the ability to love one another. Many times, I'm going to say it again, I'm a broken record on this, but I see it all over the country. And I see it in religion. It's, and it, it, <clears throat> it's not good. Many times, it's His tough love that is our instructor. In other words, learning the hard way. 
Listen, every lesson I ever learned the hard way, I never forgot. Okay? The ones that come easy, <laughs> you know, if you want to play the blues, you know, you got to pay your dues. It don't come easy, right? There you go. Verse 13. Thank you, Ringo. <clears throat> Hereby know we that we dwell in Him. Here's, a, here's how we know He's living in us. And he, in, and he in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. Mm. So when you take your correction, take it like a man, take it like a woman, make no mistake about it, this is an absolute gift from God that is His Spirit coming to live within you for your loving Him and for your believing Him. All right? Paul writes in Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, I said the gift, I said the gift of God, the giving God, that's His nature, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 14, And we have seen and do testify, John said, that's all the apostles, that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. In other words, John is saying, we, the apostles, were eyewitnesses and have deliberately and steadfastly contemplated, searched the Scriptures, and do bear witness that the Father has sent the Son as the Savior of the world. That's it, period. End of story, John said. He was that emphatic. He did walk with him. Verse 15. <clears throat> Whoso shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, what happens? God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Have you ever confessed and believed that Jesus is the Son of God? Let's read it again. Whosoever shall confess, shall say, that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him, and He in God. So, how do you receive God? Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him. That's what you do. And then along with that, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10, Paul says you must believe from the heart, that's what he's talking about here, as well as confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord, if you're watching me, whatever the part of the world you're watching me from, if you believe that Jesus is Lord, say this with me. Jesus is Lord. Yes. Now, what does that mean? That means He's Lord over my life, having to do with everything in my life. Am I perfect? Oh no! I'm going to make mistakes. But He's also the one that gave me the forget repentance and forgiveness combination that when I do mess up, I can back up and erase that thing and God will separate my sins, my mess up, if I'm honest and I really repent about it. He'll separate my sins, He said, as far as the east is from the west. Mm, 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 mm. And if one does this, if he confesses that Jesus is Lord, according to Paul, he will at that point be made a new creature. As Paul states in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says, Therefore, if any man, if any woman be in Christ, did you confess Him? Do you believe it? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you did anything past that point. Did you do that much? Okay? He is and she is a new creature. Now that don't mean that you know everything right there. But you've been birthed a brand new baby into the kingdom of God because that's what it takes. And now you are a brand new creature. <clears throat> now you're going to find out life's a lot different than the way you were living it before and you're going to be real happy with your new life. All things he said, all the crap you used to get involved in that got you in all that trouble are passed away, he said. Behold, all things are become new. Think about that. I've been a builder all my life. I've never seen an ad. I've seen ads for people that want to remodel things. I've seen ads from people that want to fix things. 
All my life, I know all the builders pretty much in this whole area. Okay, I know them all. All right? <clears throat> but I've never seen one ad from one windy guy, one roofer, one framer, one concrete guy, one anybody in the construction business that advertises, behold, I make all things new. He can't do it. <laughs> but God can. You understand? He makes all things new. Your old man has passed away. You're a brand new creature. Woo, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath for us. How do you know that? From that spirit living inside of you. It bears witness with you. Okay? You got something living inside of you that was dormant before. Okay? You ever see? I saw this picture one time, a cartoon in the, in the in newspaper. And it was an ant, and he was laying on his back, and he had his feet up, and he wasn't moving. It says, dormant. <laughs> anyway, there you go. And we have believed, and we know the love God has for us. God is love. Say it with me. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Now, stop right there. Let's take a Lachim break. Ready? Are you ready out there? <clears throat> Here we go. Lachim to life. I'm going to read this verse one more time. This may be the most important verse I read all night. <clears throat> because it's terribly misunderstood. We have known and believe the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. And there are so many Christians, I run into it all the time, that read this and they think, oh, I can't offend anybody. I've got to be nicey-nice all the time. I can't offend anybody for any reason. And I'm going to tell you as a crusty old salt who's been in this all my life, that is not true at all. As believers, God sent us here to help others, and in order to help others, sometimes attitudes must be adjusted, like it or lump it. And this is why when Christ would teach truth, go back and read your Gospels. Let's see if He was nicey-nice, and they were nicey-nice to Him. <clears throat> when Christ would teach... <clears throat> there would be some people that would be very offended with what he said to the point they wanted to crucify him. Have you pushed him that far? He did. To the point they wanted to crucify him. And they tried several times. One time he walked right through the middle of the crowd. I guess God just you know, made him invisible. I don't know what happened. One time they went to push him off a cliff. They couldn't find him. He was here a minute ago. Where'd he go? <coughs> <coughs> oh, I can't offend anybody. I got to be nicey nice. Christ was real straight with the truth. He just shot it and said it like it was. He let the chips fall. And he was doing it for their own good because they were headed down the wrong path. And these were religious people that he was talking to that wanted to kill him, that finally did crucify him played right into God's hand, but still they crucified Him. You understand? Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes love is bold. And sometimes love is tough. 17, herein is our love made perfect. Or that is complete. Watch this. Watch this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so are we in this world. And He offended a lot of folks as He went through. He was God, my friend. He was, He is love. He is God. And it still says right here, and He offended many with His what? With His truth. Remember the movie? You can't handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. 
Well, there's a lot of that that goes on. Listen closely. Listen to this, because here's where a lot of people get the whole thing turned around. You got the nicey nice crowd over here, and you got the people over here who speaks the truth. Unless the chips fall. Okay? Listen closely. Love perfects us. How? Through correcting us and making us better and making us sons and daughters of God because we're not perfect. We do not perfect love. You understand? Let me say it again. Love perfects us. It's working on us on the inside. We don't tell other people what to do in the act of trying to perfect love. Does that make any sense out there? Well, it got all wound up, but it's the truth anyway. Hallelujah. Okay, so what about love? What is one of love's characteristics? Barry White. No? He had some good music, though. Are you ready? The Love Orchestra. And I love the Love Orchestra. It was great. Here's one of love's characteristics. Are you scared out there about anything? Are you scared of the economy? Are you scared of your wife, mister? Are you scared of your husband, miss? What's going on? Do you have any kind of fear? Listen to God. There, verse 18, there is no fear in love. It ain't there. But perfect love, that's the love that God's worked out in you through your trials and your toils and all that other thing, but you let Him do it. But perfected love casteth out fear. Why? Because fear has torment. God, who wants to be tormented? Especially at night. Ain't got no peace of mind. Oh, what they said, what she said, what he said. He did out, he did out, yak, did he yak, yak, yada, yada, since you've been gone. Okay? Who cares? Fear hath torment. Now, watch this. And he that feareth, read it with me, is not made perfect in love. Just ain't, it ain't in you. In other words, Fear shows weakness. And fear shows a lack of faith. And you know where it comes from? It starts with worrying. Oh, God. Oh, God, if I say the wrong thing, if I do the wrong thing. And to worry is to doubt the very promises of God. And if you let fear control your life, you are only hurting one person, my friend, and that is you. And there ain't no reason for it. Okay? You make decisions as a child of God based solely upon the Word of God and by the leading of His Holy Spirit. But you don't do it through fear. Being careful? Oh yeah, we're going to be careful. Using wisdom? Absolutely. Because like the Scripture says, love will always bring you torment, and you don't want that, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, listen real close. It is impossible, it is not possible to have fear in your heart about anything, and at the same time say, I'm comforted by God. It won't fit. The two don't go together because fear is not made perfect in love. It cannot be because they are absolute direct opposites. Am I talking to anybody? So you got to get rid of it. It's no good. And you do that by turning to God, by loving Him and talking to Him. It's called prayer. It's time to go talk to Daddy. You talk to Him. You know what's going to happen when you start talking to Him? He gonna talk to, he's going to talk to you. He, if you wait long enough, He'll talk to you. Yes. And when He talks to you, you know what that'll bring? When you actually really hear, oh, that's Him. 
I'll tell you what it'll bring. It'll bring an assurance. It'll bring an assurance to you that God is with you. And that, my friend, will drive the fear out. <coughs> 19. <clears throat> so, we love Him because He first what? Loved us. He loved us first. And that's why He created us. You know what? He, 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 he created us because He wanted a family. <clears throat> that's why God created us. And for His pleasure, we were created. And you know what? He wanted somebody just like you. You're watching me out there. He wanted somebody just like you. And believe it or not, He wanted somebody just like me. And guess what? No two of us are exactly alike. Aren't you glad for that? Ladies and gentlemen, it is amazing. We are created in His image, each one of us, and yet out of over 7 billion people alive today, no two of us have the same fingerprints. So yes, we love Him because He first loved us and He wanted us. We're His baby. And I'll tell you something else about love. You cannot demand it. I demand you to love me. Wrong. If God would have wanted love demanded, He would have created robots. But He didn't do that. He created children with their own minds and their own ability to think. Because if love is not given, it is not true love at all. It has to be given. Love has to be given. It cannot be demanded. Verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. <clears throat> For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Good question. So, do I not show uh, do I not show love for my brother if I have to put him away from me? Come on, think about it. Here's some more of this stuff that's been spread through religion. Y'all need to wake up. So do I not show love for my brother if I put him away from me, separate myself from him, or at least for a time, or maybe longer than that? The answer is no. That's why three lectures back I pointed you to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 through 16 that says, If a brother will not work, you don't feed him. Oh, that's too hard, is it? If a brother will not adhere to anything concerning our Father, and what I just read you was from our Father, you or your family, then the Bible says over there in these Scriptures that you are to, to put him to one side. However, you are not to treat him as an enemy, but as a brother exhorting him. What does that mean? That means correcting and let him know without any ifs, ands, or buts, why you have put him aside, okay, to one side. In other words, you may have to love a brother enough that you have to put him aside, okay? But you don't stop loving him, and you treat him, you do not treat him as an enemy. Just understand this. Understand that flesh is really, really weak. And just be thankful that you're not that person. Okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm giving you the Scriptures just as they come off the teletype, and that's the Bible. Okay? And I realize this is not a popular message. I'm probably not going invite, to get invited to any churches to preach. Hallelujah! <laughs> I left religion a long time ago. 35 years ago, I left organized religion. I'm not against you. Y'all do what you want to do if that's where you're at. I'm fine. I'm just telling you, I ain't going there. Okay? 
I'm sticking with the word. Amen. Amen. Verse 21. And this commandment have we from him, that he that loved God, loveth God, love his brother also. So there you have it. Love can be kissy, huggy, kissy, kissy, huggy, affectionate. That's true at times. Or it can be tough. Okay? Either way, it's still loving your brother. Okay? And again, that's the part a whole lot of people don't understand. Verse, chapter 5 and verse 1. I hope you're enjoying this. John's quite a teacher, isn't he? Whosoever believeth. Now, you've got to catch this. Okay? You're going to think, I'm going through this, and well, this is elementary here that we're going through, but I'm going to tell you something. This is the doctrine of Christ I'm getting ready to give you. And every new convert should have this. Okay? Verse, chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is what? Born of God. And everyone that loveth Him that begat loveth Him also. That is, begotten of Him. That's God and the Father. Or God and the Son. So you must believe, not kind of believe, a little bit. It's like they used to ask me, did you get your homework done? Well, uh, sort of. Did you get it all done? Well, kind of. Did you get anything done? Not, not really. <laughs> not, not, not really. Okay? <clears throat> Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth Him that begat loveth Him also that is begotten of Him. So you must believe. Kind of believing a little bit, sort of, maybe, kind of, won't cut it. Listen to the word believe. Very important. Emphatic. <clears throat> you must actually believe that Jesus is the anointed one and that He came from the Father God. Okay? That is what gives you the right to call yourself a kinsman of the Father God. Okay? Take away the belief, and what do you got? You got nothing. Zero, not a goose egg. Bowling ball. Nothing. And this, my friend, is why fear is your biggest enemy. It messes with your belief. It makes you wishy-washy, dish towel, wishy-washy. Verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God, oh, get this next one. I like this. And keep His commandments. It's knowing what? It's, you're keeping His commandments. It's knowing that we're all a part of one big family, the family of God. We want to keep them, okay? Not running from them. Well, I can't have no fun. I've got to do the commandments of God. Wrong. Look at verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous. Mm, mm, mm. And the truth is, about the commandments, God's commandments do not put you in bondage. They actually make you free. By keeping you free from sin, from sickness, from grief, from danger, guilt trips. His commandments keep you safe. Okay? Now, none of us are perfect, and we all mess up, but that is what repentance and forgiveness is for, and that's what it's all about. And then what? Then what if you mess up? Then you pick yourself up like the old song for the 40s, and you dust yourself off. And you start all over again. That's what you do. That's the beauty of repentance and forgiveness. And I know this is basic stuff, but brother, it's a good reminder for every one of us. I enjoyed studying, even though I already knew this stuff. Man, to get a refresher on this, woo! I was high in the office, let me tell you. Verse 4, For whatever is born of God, I like this, and so, you know, you confess Jesus, you actually believe it, you know. So, whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. And therefore, faith is vital and it's very important. 
Listen to the words of Paul from Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible. Say it with me. Impossible to please God. Can't do it. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he exists, that he's real. And that he is a rewarder. He's a gift giver of them that diligently seek him. But I don't know how to seek him. I, I'm getting ready to tell you how to do it. Here we go. You seek God through the reading and the studying of God's word. That's how you diligently seek your father. That's how you get to know him. His attitudes are in there. His beliefs are in there. His wishes and His hopes are in there. They're all in there. And they're all coming from Daddy. That's how you get it. <clears throat> so if you're a verse of the day guy and that's as far as you get into it, hey man, that's better than nothing. I'm all for you. Rah, rah, rah. I'd, I believe I'd start reading just a little more than that. Okay? When I look at the times, you might even want to learn to speed read. I'm not sure on that, but it's possible. Paul said in Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes, how do we get faith? By hearing, and by hearing of the Word of God. So it's real simple. It's not hard. <clears throat> when you have faith, okay, it comes from reading and studying God's Word. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you something about faith. It is always right now. It ain't five minutes ago. It ain't five minutes from now. It's right now. Therefore, faith is always in the present tense. Faith gives you the belief to know that God is real. That He is not some imaginary force out here floating around in space somewhere. If that's what you're thinking. That's not Him. But that He is real. And He's your Father. And He's your Creator. Faith is simply believing that everything God said that is yours in His Word is absolutely possible to obtain through faith. And if you're not getting it, put more faith in. Put more faith in and keep putting it in. You'll get there. And faith calls those things that are not as though they are. And guess what? That's a quote from your own Heavenly Father. He said He calls those things that are not as though they are. <clears throat> when you have faith, our Father has great and wonderful gifts and rewards for those who believe. You don't have to wait for them in the sweet by and by. You're going to get plenty there. I'll tell you that right now. Don't even worry about them. They're waiting on you. But you're going to get them right here in the nasty right now. Right now, when you need stuff right now, faith will make it appear like right now. Faith, my friend, is the key that unlocks the door to the kingdom of God. And you have to have it. You have no choice. Faith is a must-have. So get yourself into the Word and get yourself some faith. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Which requires what? Faith. <laughs> I mean, you can't get out of it, you know. And who is it that overcometh the world? It's God's elect. It's His first fruits. And to be part of God's election, you must be able, listen, to rise above the trouble that is in this world, okay? And the fact that you are free from it. And what freed you from it? Believing in Christ and His words. Can you rise above it, beloved? You can. Verse 6, this is He. Okay? Here comes some doctrines here. This is He that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only. Now remember, with the way we started this lecture, John says, you know, how do you test the Spirit? You know, or anything else? <clears throat> Whether they're uh, true or false, He says if they'll confess that Jesus came in the flesh, they're of God. If they won't do it, they're of the devil. This is He that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, John said, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit 
that bears witness because the Spirit is truth. In other words, it wasn't some magical mystery tour or mystical thing that Jesus just popped up one day all of a sudden. No, no, no. He was in a bag of water being carried in the womb by his mother Mary, just as we were, and his birth was a normal birth. And the blood ran through the umbilical cord of his mother into the veins of the child. Jesus was normal. The Son of Man. And this, very, this is very important to know. Why? Because He's going to show us, it's very important that He came that way, because He's going to show us as flesh beings, He's going to show all the rest of us that are born in the flesh, okay? How we can overcome the world. That, that was the idea. Paul writes in Hebrews 2.14, For as much then, as the children, that's us, are partakers of flesh and blood, He, Christ, also made Himself, likewise took part of the same, that through death He might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. And He was able to pay that price for our redemption on the cross because the Bible says that Jesus walked perfect before God and never sinned even one time. And because Jesus loved us. This perfect man who knew no sin paid our death penalty for breaking God's covenant law because he was the perfect sacrifice without spot or blemish. He met the, he met the bill for that that paid for our sins. And though we are not perfect, listen closely, because he paid that price with forgiveness, we have that perfection in that sense. And because He loved us, Yahshua, the Anointed One of God, brings this gift forward to all of us who believe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's take a Lakaim, shall we? Are you ready? Lakaim to life. Verse 7. <clears throat> For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Verse 8. And there, <coughs> excuse me, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And how does that come about? Here's how it happened. The Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus at His water baptism. Read the account. And the blood He shed on the cross testifies not only to His humanity and sonship, okay, but it also guarantees our redemption from sin. There's your three. The Spirit, and the water, and the blood. Say it with me. The Spirit, and the water and the blood. These three agree and bear witness of Christ in the earth. Verse 9. If we receive the witnesses of men, John said, <clears throat> the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which, we, which He hath testified of His Son. So, if we receive witness, the witness of two men in a court of law, okay, then we should gladly receive the witness of the triune head of God, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's greater than men. It is so much stronger and so much more complete than the witness of men. And this triple witness is given for all mankind, to all those who would believe. Verse 10, <clears throat> He that believeth on the Son of God hath witness in Himself. And how does that happen? Through the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Who came to live in you the day you received Christ and confessed Him as Lord. He came in there, right there. Okay? <clears throat> that is the... <clears throat> Let me read this again. And he that believeth on the Son of God hath 
witness in himself. In other words, it's something you're going to feel. And how does that happen? Through the presence of God, God's Holy Spirit, that is dwelling in you because you believe God's Word. Now, I'm going to read you three of my most favorite verses in the Bible. Next. And I used to sit and listen to Kenneth E. Hagin some 35, 40 years ago. I wore those tapes out. He, I wore out a set of tapes. I was working, building a house, and I was working by myself one winter, and I had there were six tape series, and I played them till I wore them out. I played them. I could I could repeat them. I could say them with him word for word. But I needed that in my that time in my life. I needed to solidify it in me <clears throat> that the Spirit of God lives inside me. Listen to the, what Paul says about this same thing in Romans eight and verse fourteen. I want you to turn there because this is where we'll finish up tonight. Romans eight. <coughs> Look down at verse 14. Again, I love these verses with all my heart. They mean so much to me. <coughs> Are you ready? You at home, you read it out loud with me. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. Now, there's no gender intended there, so I went ahead and put daughters in. Let's read it one more time. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. And this witness from God's Spirit to your spirit is how you know that you belong to God. And it is a very wonderful thing. And when you begin to realize that something, after you get saved, something seemed to be leading you from one good thing to the next, and that something is helping you with this problem and that situation, and you know in your heart that it was not you doing it, oh, brothers and sisters, you have to stop right there. And you have to look inward and realize that the Holy Spirit is guiding your footsteps. And it just may be, for the first time in your life, you are not trying to figure everything out. Why? Because someone is helping you to walk it out one day at a time. Ooh, and when you discover that, my friend, that will bring you peace of mind that money cannot buy. And why does it bring you peace of mind? Look at verse 15. It's because you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You see that? Because this is a different spirit. You didn't have the love of God in your heart and you was afraid of your own shadow. Or whatever you're afraid of. But you get the love of God in your heart. <clears throat> and when that once that love is perfected, hey, what happens to fear? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's read it again. <clears throat> the reason you have peace of mind is because you have not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear, which is the spirit of the world. No, no, no. But you have received, Paul said, the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Say it with me. Abba, Father. I like Abba, the group. I really do. I love their songs. And every time I see this, I think of them, you know. But you cry, Abba, Father. And what have you learned when you, when you learn to understand you can cry out to Him because He's living inside of you. What's happening here? Now, instead of you taking all the blunt force of the world and life, now you're leaning on Daddy. I'm leaning on Him a little bit, yeah. We're not alone! He's living inside. And we're not supposed to go through life afraid of everything and everyone. Why? Because we are God's children, and this word adoption in the Greek is equal to sonship.
Okay? And the subject in this verse <clears throat> are those people who have been begotten of the Spirit by the begatter and are therefore the sons and daughters of God by spiritual adoption. Hallelujah. It's the new birth that Christ talked about. It's your spiritual birth. You've been born from above. And you know it. You know, you hear Christians say, I know that I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Well, that, they really do. Because they sense that presence of God inside. And this spiritual birth is a spiritual adoption that is in fact a spiritual sonship. Get this with all the benefits of a son as an heir for God. Everything God owns belongs to you. Ooh and it is this sonship spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. Which really means, if you want to break it down to English, it means, Daddy, Daddy! Daddy, Daddy! Listen, I have to go to Daddy, Daddy! I need some help! He always helps me. It's because I know He's real and I know He's there. You have to know He's real. And you have to know He's there. You are, and you have to know that you're His child. And let me ask you a question. What good father, even on earth, good father doesn't take care of his child? Come on. God goes beyond that. Verse 16. The Spirit itself, and the word itself is a poor translation. It should have been Himself. Because the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. He, it, it, he's a person. The Spirit Himself, the Holy Spirit, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And so there you have it. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual sonship. And to have it, you must believe God. You must believe His Word. And now back, you don't have to turn to it. I'm going to repeat uh, 1 John 5.10 and we'll wrap this one up. Okay? He that believeth on the Son of God hath witness in himself. It's the witness and the evidence of sonship. But he that believeth not, God hath made him a liar. Because he believeth not, get this, the record that God gave of his son. Okay? So, if you make God out to be a liar by not believing his word, your road is going to be a rough one. And if you don't change, it's not going to end very well. Okay? But, <clears throat> if you love and believe God, you have that gift and reward for your faith. And what is the condition that presents uh, these two very different ways of life? It's real simple. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God in your life. That makes the difference. Question. Do you have that presence inside you? I hope you do. I really do. But if you don't, you know what? It's not too late to receive it. You can have it right now. Just say, Father, forgive me. I do believe Jesus is the Son of God. I do believe He came in the flesh. And I confess Him as Lord. If you just did that, guess what? You just got birthed. Because if you listen to this, and you weren't sure you were born from above, you are now because the Spirit's bearing witness with you. Amen, amen, amen. John, that apostle that Jesus loved, he's quite a man, and he's, his writings are full of wisdom. Thank you, Lord, for this humble and yet great man called John the Apostle. If you would like to write us and share what the Lord's doing in your life, or if you have a prayer request, okay, just send it to this address right here. We really would love to hear from you. And if you're enjoying our Bible studies, tell a friend about us. Won't you do that? And because we don't advertise, our only outreach is by word of mouth or click of the mouse or your phone. You know, We have no other way of getting out. Okay? So, 
spread the word and hit that subscribe button please if you haven't already and whatever you do don't miss the next lecture okay as we finish first John chapter 5 and it's going to be all about our evidence our proof of eternal life aren't you glad till next time my friends I love you all and from whatever part of the world you're watching from Shalom and Shalom.